Good morning, folks. If you didn't catch yesterday's second upload with the comet-induced CME, that's okay, because we need to come right back to it today. Not only did a sun-diving comet charge in right at this location hours before the eruption, but as the CME cloud released from the sun, it enveloped another sun-diving member of the Kreutz family. That second video from last night explains the Kreutz and other important comet-watching information. The releasing filament was the main attraction, but secondary eruptions did take place across our star, including a tiny filament snap departing which had only mediocre visualization via satellite. We do indeed have plasma filaments dancing around, but thus far it's not the Earth-facing side they prefer to exit. That goes for all charged particles up there in general, as the solar flaring remains minimal as well. Only one sunspot group of note on the north, and it is magnetically split down the middle with virtually no interaction. This one's a total dud. We are indeed still in a coronal hole solar wind stream with the plasma speed elevated, but the lack of density to the stream is allowing Earth's magnetic shield to recover from the magnetic storm. That coronal hole down south is now very visible in 211 angstroms as it turns in here. This opening is of negative polarity and is showing immense power in its core where the alphan waves emanate and moderate force in the equatorial extension. The largest earthquake of the last day was a 5.9 in Japan. The full readings list includes a number of magnitude 6 entries or higher. We also saw a rare shake in Central Africa and one above average in Jamaica. Anything over 4 in the Caribbean is worth mentioning. So right now, Mars and Venus are still pretty much conjoined from Earth's perspective, and the Mercury and Venus opposition of the Sun is taking its time to break. As this is happening, Neptune is geocentrically conjoining the Sun. Now let's come back to looking down on the system and twist to put Mercury on the line and seeing Saturn coming into the mix as well. Saturn, Mercury, Venus, and the Sun. And last but not least, the geocentric opposition of Jupiter and Mercury as February rolls into March. That's your upcoming planetary geometry. Top share from today comes from NASA's Earth Observatory, where we see the one-day effect of dust storms in Arabia. Impressive. Cyclones still churning in the Indian Ocean. Small islands are the only thing that will be affected here as it will soon turn south from heading west. In the United States, we see low pressure feeding Gulf moisture north to meet the Arctic blast still coming down. Freeze alerts exist near the Gulf coastlines tonight while negative 30 makes you tremble to think of the temperature north of the border. And that's not the wind chill. Freezing rain and blizzard conditions for much of the land. In Europe, the low and high in the Atlantic reinforce an eastward wind drive and send moisture looping around the high to the south where it meets the Mediterranean low and begins a trek back north on the heels of other pressure nodes, making a bit of a V-shape to the clouds as they come south around that low and then back north. Down under, we see an awkward move for the convergence to jump west here leading up to the tropical moisture still coming atop the northern portions of Australia. That's what the clouds say, with a couple over New Zealand to the east as well. Got the current conditions and shots of our star to close. Folks, scroll down and check the links if you aren't used to doing so. There's a lot to see. It's just after 6 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.